Join together in a word of prayer. God, our Father, we thank you for being a good and faithful God. We thank you for being who you are, doing what you do that makes our lives worth living. We thank you now for the privilege that we have to gather in worship. Meet us here. Bless us here. 
change us here and cause for us to become more and more like you. May someone come and find hope and healing, strength and peace, courage and confidence to live their lives in these dangerous and difficult times. And may someone join us with an unsaved one church and commit their life, their will, their way unto you. We ask you simply to have your way. In Christ's name we pray. The people of God together say amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast of the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt the Lord's name together. Our God is great and good, and he and he alone is worthy of our praise. Amen. Today, somebody, as we continue our worship, we sing together uh, hymn 298 in our hymnal, Just a Little Talk with Jesus. To the glory and praise of God we sing together him 298 just a little talk with Jesus I once was lost in sin but Jesus took me in and then a little light from heaven filled my soul it bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk. Let us tell him all about. He will hear our faintest. He will answer. Now when you feel a little prayer will, and you know a little fire is, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my path seems drear without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. The mist of sin may rise and hide the starry skies. But just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Now let us have a little talk. Let us tell him all about. He will hear our He will answer. Now when you feel a little prayer will, and you know a little fire is, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk. Let us tell him all about. He will hear our faintest. He will answer. Now when you feel a little prayer will, and you know a little fire is, you will find a little talk with Jesus. Now let us have a little talk. Let us tell him all about. He will hear our He will answer. Now when you feel a little prayer will, and you know a little fire, you will find a little talk. Now, 
when you feel a little prayer will and you know a little fire you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right amen wherever you are you should be giving a God giving our God praise because just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right amen we praise his name today for the fact that we can have a little talk with him, tell him all about our troubles. Thank God for our Christ who is near and answers our prayer. Amen. Good afternoon and welcome to the broadcast of the live service emanating from the St. Luke Baptist Church at Patterson, New Jersey. We are a church determined to know Christ and to make him known. And we thank God that you join with us on this day as we celebrate and give praise to our God who is worthy of all of our praise. Amen. To all of you, we say welcome, welcome, welcome. and pray that this time of worship will inspire you, strengthen you, and cause you to know our Christ in a more committed and loving way. As you are worshiping with us today, won't you type into the comment section, welcome to all those who worship with us on this day. And right from where we are, we welcome you. Amen. Let me say uh, to the St. Luke family today, uh, let me thank you for another exceptional week of ministry. Thank God for your continued commitment to prayer and study. Uh, and, and as we serve God in this community, we thank God for every way you help us be light and salt for this community that needs Christ in a very real and powerful way. I apologize today for the technical difficulties that we experienced on Wednesday for Noonday Bible study. They have been addressed and we look forward to having you study with us at the Noonday Hour on this coming Wednesday. Thank you for all who volunteered and supported our food giveaway on Thursday, sponsored by the St. Luke CDC. For the month of August, we served 898 people. For the month of August who are in need of food, God be praised uh, for those of you who continue to work and volunteer. We thank you for your volunteering spirit, for your effort to help us continue to make Christ known in this way and look forward to the work that we shall engage in as we serve the Lord in the month of September. Amen. Special reminder and special note to all the ladies of St. Luke. Wednesday, September 16th at 7 p.m. is Women's Only Prayer. Our guest prayer leader will be the Reverend Natasha Rouse of the Pleasant Grove Church in Newark. And Friday, September 18th and Saturday, September 19th uh, at 7 p.m. on Friday night, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. We will host our virtual women's conference of the year 2020. Reverend Nicole Colbert Gross will again be our facilitator for those for that night and that day. We want every woman of St. Luke, every lady of the Luke to be a part of the Wednesday prayer on the 16th. At the conference on uh, the 18th and 19th, they will all be done on Zoom. It will be a virtual experience. There is no cost for registration or participation this year. Uh, we simply ask you to register by calling the church office beginning tomorrow uh, between the hours of 10 and 3. We want every woman in our church to be a part of this experience as we grow together. We will not let the pandemic stop us from growing as sisters and brothers in Christ. Amen. Sisters, we want to see you. Sign. I'm going to look at the list every day. If you, I'm going to be like Santa Claus. I'm going to check my list. I'm going to check it twice. I'm going to find out who's naughty and nice. Have your name on the list and make sure that you share in the conference this year as we grow together uh, as sisters first and then as brothers in the Lord. Amen. A reminder that we gather in this new week for study and prayer wherever we're called to be. Uh, youth, uh, our regular classes, let's be uh, present for those things that we might continue to grow together in the Lord as we conclude this wonderful month of August that leads us to the wonderful month of September. Somebody say amen for September. Amen. Pray, remember today to keep in prayer all of our bereaved all of our sick, remember that there's no secret what God can do, what he's done for others, he will do for you. All of our sick, we pray for today that God will strengthen them and heal them for those who are bereaved. We pray for their comfort, their hope, and their peace. We remind you today, if you are not a registered voter, Please, ma'am, sir, you're 18 years old to change your name and your address or you've never registered. Please make sure that you are registered to vote in this 2020 election that will take place on Tuesday, November 3rd, here in the United States of America. Every vote, every election is important. Every vote counts and matters. If you're not ready to please do that today, you can do so by coming to St. Luke Church any day this week. Our office hours at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We will register you on site because we want to make sure that every citizen of our local community, of our congregation, and across our country are ready to vote. You can exercise your right in the upcoming election. We have seen this past week the Republican National Convention. Uh, whose featured headliner was your president. Amen. We have seen him uh, show us his best, and we know that we deserve better. Somebody ought to say amen. Register to vote for this upcoming election that we might exercise our right and do what we need to do to make our country what it should be for God's glory and honor. Also, do not forget that we are uh, yet uh, registering and completing the 2020 census. 
uh, the census is important and essential and vital to us as Americans. Please, ma'am and sir, if you have not completed your 2020 census, do so today. Uh, ASAP, the deadline is in September. I think it's September 23rd, but it's at the end of September, toward the end of September. Uh, may we please do that, particularly in our city. Of the city of Patterson, uh, the census decides what funds come to a city for schools and for police and for fire people and other necessary components of our city uh, infrastructure. Please, ma'am and sir, make sure that you complete your census uh, today. And if you need help, you may also call the office during the office hours. We will kindly give you direction and assist you as to how that can be done. As we pray, so remember to pray for the situation in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where Jacob Blake was uh, uh, unnecessarily shot down like a nobody. Pray for our country where racism uh, is yet alive and well. Pray that there will be peace in our country and that black people, particularly black men, will be regarded and respected, not shot down, gunned down like dogs. Amen. August 28, 1963, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King uh, was the was one of the speakers of the March on Washington. It is there, there where he gave, uh, in, in that particular way that we all know it, his famous I Have a Dream speech. 57 years later, uh, on this past Friday, Americans of all races, ethnicities, and colors gathered in Washington to commemorate that march and to rededicate themselves to the fight for justice in our country. I pray that all of us who are people of goodwill, people of good faith, and those who believe in the risen, resurrected Christ might commit ourselves to uh, living in such a way that our lives will help bring uh, justice, equality, and freedom to all who live here in the land of America. 65 years after uh, Emmett Till was violently killed, uh, in Mississippi on uh, uh, August 28th, uh, 1957, 1955, we are still fighting uh, for black men to be treated with regard and respect in America. We have come a long way, but we still got a long way to go. Amen. Pray for our country that peace might prevail in it and that God's people might leave for freedom to come into our land, even into our world. Today is August 30th which means that there's one more day before the month of September. I remind you, y'all not listening to me, Patsy and Scott, y'all gotta listen, gotta get on cue with me because uh, August is the forerunner for the wonderful month that God loves, amen. So we thank God for this John the Baptist month on August, it's almost done, but I want y'all to join me in singing happy birthday to me and Anthony, amen. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do it now because next week we'll be like six days into it, we don't wanna wait, amen. So wherever you are, I need to hear y'all singing from across America. I want to hear my mother singing from, from her house. Everybody, I want y'all to stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, y'all, and sing happy birthday to those of us born in the month that God loves. Ready? One, two, three. Happy I can't hear you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Louder. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. May God bless us. May God bless me. I can't hear you. May God bless me. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Amen. Come on, y'all clap. Everybody clap. Clap for me and Anthony and Bessie Buffalo, Kenny Sumter, as we celebrate our birthday. The month of September is the month that God loves. God be praised.
When you can see your way, and you feel that you have gone astray, doing all you forgotten you. Sing a song, yes, yes. Sing a song. Oh, yeah. 
consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Thank you for being a door opening God who makes ways out of no ways. Thank you for meeting us in worship already, allowing your spirit to be pregnant and present among us. And now from your word, speak to my neighbor, even speak to me. And allow what we hear to not only feed our souls, but to transform our lives and make us authentic disciples that you can use for your glory. There's someone among us who worships with us, who's on stage run church. For him or her, we pray. And for all those who believe, belong, believe in you and belong to your church, may we be strengthened in our resolve to continue to fight on, knowing that if we fight for you, you will fight for us. And you will open doors for us that no man can close or open. Speak now and let your people hear. In Christ's name we pray. The people of God together say amen. If you love God, wherever you are, you should put your hands together. And you ought to give our great, big, wonderful God great, big praise today. For truly he is worthy of our praise. I invite you, as I thank the ensemble for sharing the ministry of music, I invite you to join me in the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings again. There in chapter 12, we find the words for our preaching text on this day and this hour. Uh, Genesis chapter 12, if you have a problem following Genesis, please text me or call me because you got some real problems. It's an easy book to find. 12th chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning at verse number 10. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. As he was about to enter Egypt, he heard, he said to his wife, Sarai, I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but will let you live. Say you are my sister so that I will be treated well for your sake and my life will be spared because of you. When Abram came to Egypt, the Egyptians saw that Sarai was a very beautiful woman. And when Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh and she was taken into his palace. He treated Abram well for her sake and Abram acquired sheep, cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants and camels. But the Lord inflicted serious diseases on Pharaoh and his household because of Abram, Abram's wife, Sarai. So Pharaoh summoned to Abram, uh, what have you done to me, he said. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister so that I took her to be my wife? Uh, now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. Then Pharaoh gave orders about Abram to his men, and they sent him on his way with his wife and everything that he had. I want to preach today from the subject, the danger of doing it your way. The danger of doing it your way. On last Sunday, we began the current preaching series, which is entitled, Are You Serious? Lessons from the Life of Abraham. In this particular series of sermons, we are looking at and studying from the life of Abraham, also known as Abram. And we are witnessing moments from his life that force him to ask God, God, are you serious? But at the same time, Tamara, we are discovering that often, if not always, in the same moment, God was really asking Abram, also known as Abraham, Abram, are you serious? I must, of necessity concept, repeat again today that God uses troubles and trials in our lives to detect and determine how serious we are about him. I've noticed a few years that I've been in church, Kendrick, that, that trouble will determine who's real and who ain't. Sometimes, sometimes people let the least little thing turn them away from God. But, you, but, but in a time like these, in the time that we're living in now, you have to be sure and very sure that your faith and trust in God is for real. Because no matter how bad the times are, God is still good. It is easy to declare a love for God, a trust for God, and praise to God in good times. It's easy to come to church and to worship the Lord when things are well in your life. But can you declare love for God, trust for God, and praise to God in bad times? If God is worthy of our declaration of love, trust, and praise, then he is worthy of such not just sometime, but all the time. We always talk about God is good all the time. That's not a question. But the question is, do you and I love him as we should at all times? 
The psalmist declares in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Here are the key words, at all times and continually. I'm not just going to praise him when things are well. I'm going to praise him at all times. In fact, in fact, I'm going to praise him so much that you ain't going to know when things are bad because I'm always going to be praising him. So, you know, sometimes, sometimes you got those people who want to praise and holler and shout and scream when things are rough. No, I'm going to praise him continually so you will never be able to distinguish when it's bad, when it's good, because praise is what I always do no matter what I am going through. I bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. This series of sermons will challenge you and I to look at how serious we are about being faithful to God no matter what. We need to be asking ourselves as we are listening to these messages, am I serious about serving God no matter what, no matter what the season is in my life, no matter what I'm struggling with, going through, no matter what I'm dealing with, no matter what's going on in my family, my home, my finances, am I serious about serving God who is faithful to me at all times? How serious are we about being faithful to the God who is always faithful to us? I'm bothered by church people who are intermittently faithful. They're faithful when it's convenient for them. If you are faithful to God, and to a church that's convenient to, to you, then you ain't really faithful. But faithful folk, they're going to walk with God. They're going to be God's ride or die until our last day. On last Sunday, we studied, uh, we studied God's initial invitation to Abraham to follow him. Now, I, I've called that moment in Genesis 12, beginning in verse 1, God's initial invitation to Abram, because once God extended Connie to Abram, the initial invitation to follow him, God kept on extending invitation after invitation after invitation. And he did so, Jason, because God wanted Abram to respond with another yes. You are to say or type in another yes. Now, you and I need to hear that today because none of us can be content with our acceptance of God's initial invitation to follow him or to trust him. And we cannot because all the initial invitation was was just that. It was the initial invitation. It was initial. Don't be, don't be shouting that I came to Jesus just as I was weary, worn, and sad. That was the initial invitation. But after that, when God is still inviting you and I to come to him and keep on saying another yes, God keeps on inviting us to follow him, to trust him, to obey him, to serve him, to study him, to give to him, to pray to him, to make our lives full and complete to him. God wants you and I to give him another yes. In fact, Authentic discipleship is about you and I growing to surrender and say yes to the Lord over and over again until the Lord controls every aspect of our lives. That's why I love that hymn, Scott. It said, Lord, I want to live for thee every day and hour. Let thy spirit be in me in his saving power. Keep my heart. Keep my hand, keep my soul, I pray. Keep my tongue to speak thy praise. Keep me all the way. God wants us to be totally and completely his, but we can be and we will be only if we keep on giving the Lord another yes. Not another dance, not another shout, not another holler, but another yes, a surrender to him that makes him fully and completely in control and in charge of every aspect of our lives and living. Last Sunday, we were focused on the first, uh, first uh, nine verses of chapter 12. There we learned of and we witnessed God's initial invitation to Abram. He invited Abram to hear what he said, trust what he said, and do what he said do. D don't miss that. And the initial invitation and the successive invitation, he asked Abram and will ask Abram today to hear what he said, trust what he said, and do what he said do. You remember God told Abram, chapter 12, Genesis uh, verse 1, he said, to leave his country, his family, and his relatives, and to go to a land that God would show him. Literally, God told Abram to go without knowing. Leave where you are, go. Go to a place that you are unfamiliar with, 
I will show you it, and I will help you get there. It is prepared for you, and I prepared you for it. Just trust me. Follow me. Trust me. I will make you great. I will bless you, and I will make you a blessing. With this invitation of followership, uh, it caused Abram to ask God, are you serious? You, 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 no, you, you want me to leave all of this to go on a journey where I don't know where I'm going? Like Fred Sam was talking about, you want me to leave this empire to go where you say go? You, you want me to leave my money and my wealth and my comfort and, and, and trust you? You want me to walk a tightrope with you, God? God, God said, yeah. We discovered last week that God was testing and questioning if Abraham was serious. Because he wanted to know if Abram was serious about hearing from God, trusting God, and obeying God. God wanted to know, Abram, are you serious about being a blessing and about being blessed in the ways that I say you can and should be blessed? Today, we look at the next invitation by God to Abram in order for Abram to say uh, another yes to God. L look at verse 5 of chapter 12. In verse 5, chapter 12, Abram, accompanied by Sarai and Lot, have left Haran following God's leadership. They arrived at Canaan near the sacred tree of Moray in a place called Shechem. The Canaanites were still in the land at that time, but God promised Abram that one day he would give Abram and his family that land forever. And in that place, Abram built an altar. He built an altar there to demonstrate his devotion to God, Bessie, and his worship of God, even in a foreign land. If you are a lover of God and a worshiper of God, you ought to be able to worship God anywhere, any place, and at any time. Now, I know, I know it's been six months and a whole lot of us haven't been in church, but the truth is, a whole lot of y'all wouldn't come to church before the pandemic started. Now y'all trying to run in church, but, but, but I know it's something about being in the building. I get it, but, but if you are God's child, you can have as much church in your house as you can in his house build an altar there a place where you can say yes Lord again here I am Lord again use me again make me again make me fully yours Abram built an altar there and then traveled to the hill country east of Bethel and he camped between Bethel and Ai and he built another altar there to worship and to praise God he, he went to Canaan but Canaan wasn't ready yet but God told him that sooner or later, I'm going to give this land to your family and you will own it and live in it forever. Can I tell you something today? Number one, I want to tell you this, that a delayed promise is not a denied promise. Y'all ought to make somebody shout. It, it may be delayed, but it ain't denied. If God said it, he will bring it to pass. Delays don't mean denial. Number two is this, Connie, promises do not come without a process. See, see, there, there, there are people in church today who just want everything the easy way. I know we can microwave stuff like that, get food like that. We can tweet and text like that, communicate with people like that. But God don't work like that. Promises do not come without a process. Just because Abram listened to God and trusted God and obeyed God did not mean that the promise would be achieved without struggle. And that's a word for you and I today. God's promises to us are made manifest and realized through a process. And that process takes time. Somebody say time. And while the process plays itself out, in the meantime, you and I must learn how to trust and wait on God. Please understand that waiting is not passive, it's active. While you and I are waiting, we ain't just sitting around with our legs crossed. We are working, we are worshiping, we are witnessing, we are praising while we wait on God for our miracle. Because if we do our part, God will do his part. You got to learn to wait. Old folks said you can't hurry God. Just have to wait. You got to trust him and give him time no matter how long he takes. He's a God. You can't hurry. He'll be there. Don't you worry. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Shake yourself and tell yourself, my God is an on-time God. And because he is, you and I have got to learn how to wait on the Lord and be of good courage because he will strengthen our hearts. 
In chapter 12 of Genesis, verse 9, we are told that Abram and those he led started out toward the southern desert. And in verse 10, they encounter a problem. And the problem was failing crops and no food anywhere in the land. Now, wherever there's no food, that's a problem. Kendrick ought to say amen because he likes to eat. Wherever, wherever, if, if there ain't no food in the house, that's a problem. And they were on this journey not knowing where they were going. And God said he'd take care of them. But in the midst of their journey, they wind up in a situation where there is no food. And I can hear Abram in my sanctified imagination saying to God, are you serious? You made me leave my full refrigerator and my freezer's full of food to come out here and ain't got no food? You brought me and my family out here to die. You led us out here to start to death. You made me leave all of our food where we left it, and now we don't have anything. God, are you serious? Are you playing this sick trick on me? But well, Zanias loudly as I hear Abram asking God, are you serious? I hear God asking Abram, are you serious? Abram, are you serious? You're going you gonna to act foolish like that? You're going to act like I didn't take care of you? You're you going to act like I have not provided for you? Or, are you serious? Are you serious about now stepping out and not believing what I can do right now when you look at what I've already done in the past? Are you serious, Abram? Do you believe that I can? And I will take care of you? Do you believe that I can and I will feed you when the crops are failing? Do you believe that I can and I will provide for you when there appears to be no provision? Do you believe that I can and I will feed you when you're hungry and clothe you when you're naked? Abram, do you really believe? Abram, are you serious? Because of food scarcity and food insecurity, Text says, text says, Bessie, Robert, that Abram and Sarai went to Egypt. Because in Egypt, there was an abundance of food. Now, y'all read it. Read your Bible carefully. Don't take my word for it. The text says that Abram and Sarai went to Egypt, but it does not say that God told them to go to Egypt. And going on your own, and going when God says go. God told Abram to leave in the beginning of the chapter, but God didn't tell Abram to go to Egypt. Abram just went on his own without God's direction. You better be careful. Better be careful. I better be careful about just up and going and doing stuff when God had not said do it. I, I'm scared of these folk who are talking about what God said. You better sit down and listen to make sure it's God's voice and not your voice. Because sometimes we impose on God our will and not his. Abram passed the first test by leaving his country and relatives to follow God. But in this moment and in this instance, he failed the next test. And because he did not believe that God could or would take care of him in a difficult circumstance. He passed test number one, but he, he failed test number two. This would be the first of several incidents where Abram would display doubt and a lack of trust as it relates to the promises of God in his own life. And this display of doubt uh, would always force Abram to take things into his own hands and, in the words of Frank Sinatra, do it his way. And can I tell you and remind myself, uh, Jordan, that you and I better be careful of doing things our way when our way is not God's way. Yeah, be, be careful. Be, 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 be very careful of doing things that are outside of God's will just because it's what we want and we think it's expedient to help us get what we want and where we want our own way. Look, look, look at them, Pastor. They're, they're en route to Egypt. They're going to Egypt without God's direction. And on their way to the place where God did not tell them to go, Abram devises a plot. Sarah, his wife, she was a beautiful woman. She had 
She had, I don't know who she looked like. She, was, she had to be F-I-N-E fine. Had to be. Had to be 36, 24, 36 fine. Had to be that kind of fine. And, 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 and Abram feared that, that her beauty would make the Egyptian pharaoh want to take her into his own harem. If the Egyptians uh, knew that he was her husband, then they would kill him to get to her. That's how fine she was. But, but if they thought he was her brother, his life would be spared. And he would be given a place of position and honor in the Egyptian monarchy. He, he, realized, uh, he realized the worth of the woman that he had. And every brother who got a woman ought to realize the worth of the woman that he has. And every woman ought to realize the worth of the man she has. Amen, somebody. You realize the worth of the person that you got? Uh, but, 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 but because Abram was going to the place where God did not tell him, he had to fix stuff to make sure that he could take care of himself because he wasn't sure that God would. And he wasn't sure if God would because he's going to a place that God did not tell him to go. So they devised this plan. And, and in verse 13, Abram tells Sarai, say that you're my sister so that I will be treated well for your sake and my, and my life will be spared because of you. Abram dropped the ball of faith and trust in God. And rather than trusting God in the difficult moment of his life, he decided to make things easier for himself. And he made things easier by himself by doing it his way and not God's way. I'm almost done, but let me repeat again. A delayed promise is not a denied promise. And promises do not come without a process. Sometimes up, sometimes down. Uh, sometimes on the mountain, sometimes in the valley. But if God said it, you can trust God to bring you to it, to bring us through it, and to bring us out. That's a word for right now because it's gone longer than we thought. But thank God we are still here. And God's promise is to keep us and to lead us if and as we trust him. But for a moment, Abram did not believe in the promises of God. He did not believe in the provision of God and the protection of God, uh, God, according to Abram, must have forgotten who he was, where he was, and what was going on. Now, now remember, God had already proven himself trustworthy. God already showed Abram that if I tell you to go, I'll take care of you. I'll make a way for you. I'll open a door for you. I'll, I'll make sure everything is right. He proved himself already, but in this moment, what God had already done was not good enough for Abram. So he decided to do it his own way, but his own way caused for him to add lies and untruths to what was going on. And, and I've got to remind myself and remind you at the same time that we better look around and see what God has already done. Before you and I start doubting God and thinking that God cannot remember what he's already done, remember every door he's opened, every way he's made, every liar he shut up, every door he closed, every hellhound he kept away. Remember the, the body that was sick that's now well. Remember the struggles of yesterday and yesteryear. Remember what he's brought us through. And when you think about the goodness of what he's done and all that he's done, it won't just make you cry out. It'll make you remember and trust him all the more. You know why I trust God? Because God got a good track record in my life. Yeah, from the day I was conceived, he's been taking care of me. I've not been aborted. I've not been thrown away. I've not been cast aside. I've not been lost. I've never been hungry, never been down and out. God has always taken care of me. And though sometimes the clouds hang low and the road gets rough, when I remember what he's already done, it helps me realize that you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about it. And when you know what you know, and you know who you know, you don't need nobody else. You can stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and know that just when I need him the most, he will step in, he will show up, he will make a way. I, I need some witnesses now. Anybody ever been sick in the past and God healed your body? So if he's healed your body then, then you know he can heal your body now. Anybody ever been broke? I mean, broke in the past, broke in the Ten Commandments in the past, and, and then, and, but God made a way for you, your bills got paid. So when you get broke now, you remember, I've been broke before. So if I'm broke now, what he did then, he'll do it now. Anybody ever been lonely in the past, but God kept you comforted, and now when you're lonely now, you know what he did then, he'll do now. Anybody ever cried in the past, but so when you cry now, remind you, he dried your eyes then, he'll dry your eyes now. Don't you make 
me shout because when I think about what he's already done and already brought me through, it makes me want to holler, great is thy faithfulness. Oh, God, my Father, there is no shadow of changing with thee. Thy change is not thy compassion. They fail not. Great is, great is thy faithfulness. Oh, Lord, unto me, he's a faithful God. And because he's been good, and because he is good, I can remind myself and tell myself that he will be good. The process may not be easy. The struggles may be real. But if he's been good, and he is good, he will be good. But Abram chose to do it his way. Rather than God's way, rather than wait on God, trust in God, he said, let me take it into my own hands and do it my way. And Abram moves without God. Look, look, look. If you find it, I'll stop preaching. God never told Abram to go. Abram went on his own. And again, I repeat, Anthony, that you and I better be careful about going and doing when God didn't say do it. Abram was right, though about King Pharaoh. According to verse 14, verse 14, his wife had to be fine. She had to be F-I-N-E fine. She was so fine that Abram knew it was going to be some trouble. So he was right. Pharaoh heard about his wife, Sarai, and he, 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 he brought her into the king's harem. She was brought there, but she was treated well, and Abram was treated well because they did not believe that Sarai was her, his wife. Abram got blessed because of the lie of Sarai being his sister. I shouldn't say blessed. He became successful. He became successful on the side of man because he had a flock of animals. He had maid servants. That meant that he had, he had a, a, a cattle and sheep and all that stuff. Didn't belong to him. They were given to him. He had maid servants given to him. He was able to appear successful in the sight of people. But in the sight of God, he was a failure. And you, 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 got, you better hear me. Be careful of trying to appear like you something in people's eyes when God knows we ain't nothing. And what I mean by that, don't let, don't let the accoutrements of life, don't let the accessories of life make, make you think that, that if you ain't got the accessory that you ain't nothing. Don't, 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 don't let a coach or a Gucci or, or a Louis Vuitton make you think like you ain't nothing or you are something. Don't, don't you let a Lexus or a Benz or a BMW make you think you're something when you ain't nothing. No, be careful of, letting, of being accepted and pleasing in God and people's eyes and not in the eyes of God. Abram looked like somebody to people. But he wasn't nothing in God's sight. He was successful, but he had not been faithful. And hear me, what God wants from us is faithfulness. You, you want to make God happy. You want to get God excited. Be faithful. If, if we're faithful, he promised to bless us. If we're faithful over a few things, he'll let us rule over much, not after a while, by and by. But faithfulness right now will get God's attention and cause for God to extend himself in your life and in my life. Just learn to be faithful. Abram chose to do it his way. And his way made him, made him self-made and not God-made. He chose his way and not God's way. And hear me, it does not matter how successful we try to be or are. If we have not done it God's way, then it really doesn't matter. Be careful of envying people who look like they got it all together. Or people who are successful in the eyes of people, but not in the eyes of God. I know some Negroes who wear $500 shoes. I've never, I've never owned a pair of shoes for $500, I promise you. I just think that's a waste. But $500 shoes, $300 belts. I know sisters who pay $100 for their hair, and they look successful. They drive nice. Their nails are done. Everything is co-forward and, and put together. But on the inside, they are empty 
and broken and barren. I know people with PhDs and MBAs and, and, and BAs who, 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 who are letter people and they appear to be great, but on the inside they are broken and they're empty and barren. Stop looking at folk as model success. You ought to find people who are faithful to God, who are filled with God's power and filled with God's love, and you ought to find, draw from them how they're able to make it, and they make it because God is faithful to those who are faithful to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Faith honors God. That's what Victor Curry in Florida says. Faith honors God and God honors faith. If you, you want to honor God, don't, don't just talk about I'm praising God. No, give an honor to God. No, honor God by showing faith. And if you and I honor God with faith, God will honor our faith with his power. Yes, yes, yes he will. Abram got what he wanted, but he was not who God wanted him to be. And because he and Sarai were out of place, uh, and out of God's will, instead of being a blessing to others, hear this, he began to cause for his presence to be a curse. Go back to the beginning of chapter 12. The promise was, leave, follow me, I'll make you great, I'll make you, a, I'll bless you, and I'll make you a blessing. That's if you stay in my will, that's God. But if you go outside of my will, you won't be a blessing you're going to be a curse. And you're going to be the cause for sickness and disease. It's in the text. In verse 17, the Lord inflicted serious diseases on Pharaoh and his household because of Abram and Sarah. And in verse 18, Pharaoh asked, Abram, what have you done to me? Pharaoh realized that Abram was like a cancer, causing and spreading sickness and disease in his family, in his community, and among his people. He said, Abram, what have you done to me? God told Abram, follow me. I'll make you a blessing. Abram chose not to follow God in this moment, and instead of being a blessing, he is now a curse. Once Pharaoh realized what Abram and Sarai had done, how they lied to him to get what they wanted from him, Pharaoh said, y'all leave here, get, get away from me. Take what you can, take what you have, and leave here. Abram lost faith in God and in God's ability to keep his promise. Abram did not believe that God would provide for him and that God would protect him. So he decided to do it his way. I'm done, but, but he did not listen to God. He did not trust God. He did not obey God. He decided, Arya, to put it in his hands and do it his way. Y'all better hear me. The end result was that Abram, whose life was supposed to be a blessing, by his own choice and decisions, his life became a curse. All because he decided not to do what God said do. And as I take my seat, I just, I'm just possibilitizing. I'm just wondering. I wonder if what happened to Abram has not also happened to us. I wonder if individual believers like you and I, people who love to praise him, love to lift him up, love to sing to him, I wonder if we have not done what Abram did and take things into our own hands and start doing things our way. I wonder if the church, not, not, not just St. Louis, but the body of Christ and believers around the world, have, have, if we have not forsaken the way of God to do it our way. I, I mean, could it be that because the child of God and the church of the living God has given up God's way for our own way, God's things for our thing, that instead of blessing the world, building the world, and healing the world, could it be that we are causing the pain and the sickness in our land? I mean, we want, we want to blame Trump, and Trump got his blame. We want to blame the Republicans. We want to blame the Democrats. We want to blame everybody. But, but maybe the church ought to look at herself and see in what ways we are the cause for the pain and the hurt that's in our world. You know, Scott, since March, none of our conventions have met. None of our associations have met. None of our convocations have met. And they ain't going to meet this year. And you know what? Ain't, ain't, ain't nobody mad with the folk who went there. 
And ain't nobody mad that National Baptist Convention and the Progressive Baptist Convention and Church of God in Christ and Church of God. Nobody mad that no, the world don't care because the world did not benefit from our gathering anyway. That was just for us to come together and give each other a big high five about what we doing good that ain't helping nobody but us. Could it be, could it be that the church is the cause of the poverty and the hopelessness and, and the homelessness and the struggle that people are going through. Could it be our fault? I think maybe it could. Because that, that's why the Lord says, if my people, talking about us, who are called by my name, talking about us, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and here's, here's the part I love, turn from their wicked ways, talking about us. Then I'll hear from heaven, and then I'll heal their land. Maybe the wicked ways might be us doing our thing and not God's thing. Maybe our wicked ways are, are us forsaking God's word and will for what we think is expedient. Maybe we are the problem. Just maybe. Our swaying and sashaying and our mess. Maybe, maybe it's us. And for six months now, we haven't been able to do none of that silly stuff. For six months, we, we, many churches have just been on pause. They don't know what to do. I know what to do. Come to church, sing a song, say a prayer, hear his word, get up and go do something. Forget your sway and your sachet and your annual day and your fish fry and your mess. No, that's not going to help the world. That's not going to heal the world. That's not going to save the world. Maybe we are the problem. So, so, so in light of that, we need to think about what Abram did and see what we are doing. Are we choosing our way over God's way? Are we trusting in ourselves rather than trusting God and taking God at his word? Let, let me push it further. Do we even know his word enough to know what he's saying? I, I don't understand how you can be in church all your life and you still know as little of the Bible as you did when you first came. You remember in the old church in the basement they used to have the rare old Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You still don't know where the books are. Took the train down, folks don't know what's going on. All this technology and you still know as little as you did when you said you first came to the Lord and that's why the church is still impotent, not important, impotent, powerless, unable to address and heal the sicknesses of our community. Uh, may, maybe it's because we've been trusting in self, but not trusting God's word, and we cannot trust in a word that we don't know. I'm sure God was asking Abram, are you serious? Are you serious about following me? Trusting me? Obeying me? doing what I say do. And likewise, for all of you who listen and worship with us, and particularly the people who are part of St. New Church, God is asking you and me, are you serious? Musician, I, I, I'm not, he's not asking you are serious about playing your instruments, your, your guitar, your keyboard, your drums, your, your organ. That, that's easy because that's your skill. But are, are you serious about serving me for real beyond the instrument? Ensemble who make up what, what would normally be a choir or choirs. I, 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 are you serious about singing? Not just singing on Sunday where folk can see you, but are you serious about living a life that's full and complete and whole and holy? Preacher, are, are, you, are you serious about living a life preaching? Not just preaching and teaching, but living what you preach, living what God says. Are you serious? Church, are you serious about doing God's will to impact this community and to lift it and liberate it and cause for men and women who were down and dirty to get up and to be clean and be made whole. Are you serious about doing what I say do, about trusting my promises, about knowing my word and living my word so that people can be transformed and healed? Are you serious not just about doing what you do, but doing what I say do? Well, let me give you the pattern about being serious. Here it is. It's simple. Kendrick, here it is. Here it is. First, hear what God says. Flip through the Bible and hear him. Hear him. Hear him, Zania. 
from Genesis to Revelation, hear him, hear him in, in moments of prayer. So I told somebody about prayer, they said, well, Pastor, I, I pray. I said, no, prayer ain't just about what you say. It's about, it's about your, your listening to God. And see, when you start studying his word and devotion, and you start st spending time of quiet meditation, God will speak. And his speaking is not always comforting or comfortable. Sometimes God says something to me that I don't like, and he don't care if I don't like it. He's still speaking it. I got to hear what he says. I got to trust what he says. H how is it that we can trust folk who lie to us? And I, not just one time, I got some folk who done lied to me a whole lot of times. I'm not going to say they're my children, but they done lied to me. My mother done lied to me. She's watching now trying to figure, I ain't lied to you. Yes, you have. You lied to me. She lied to me. People that I love have lied to me. Some, most of y'all St. Luke have lied to me at some point. Some folks said, Pastor, I'll never leave you. They gone. Liar. Now, I ain't mad, but I'm just saying what I'm saying. How is it that we trust folk, but we won't trust God? As much as I love my mother, God has never failed me. As much as I love my children, God has, they, they have failed me. My mother has failed me. My, my father who deceased, he failed me. Kendrick and Kenneth have failed me at times. Y'all failed me. I failed y'all because we are failing human beings. But can I tell you who ain't never failed me yet? And because he ain't failed me yet, I'm sure he won't fail me in the future. God, I have trusted him with my life and I can tell you for almost 51 years he has taken care of me all the days of my life when I when I did not know who he was or where he was he's been taking care of me and since I've known who he is where he is what he does he's been taking care of me God has never failed me I, I told Vivian Gaines and I told Tiffany Smith a few weeks ago I found this song Scott and and I remember the song from the 80s the song is God it's a hymn God never fails and and I remember because a few weeks ago uh, uh, I was watching Calvary's broadcast and Reverend McKinney's daughter Gina was preaching that day and she he started talking about how God never fails, quoting the hymn. And I thought about old Church of Love when they were on Auburn Street. For one of their church anniversaries, they were, the Lagarde singers were in the balcony of 2-4 Auburn Street. And that marching song was God Never Fails. And they started marching down those steps. And they were singing that song, he abides with me, gives me victory. No, God never fails. Keep the faith and never cease to pray. Just walk upright. Call him noonday and night. He'll be there. He'll be there. There's no need to worry because God in the soprano will holler out, whoa, whoa. He never fails. He never failed me yet. So I trust him. The pattern is you got to hear what God says, trust what God says, but then you got to do what God says do. That's obedience. God keeps saying to you and me while we're saying to him, are you serious, God? He's saying, are you serious? And if you're going to be serious, you got to hear what God says. That's this got to trust what God says. That's this. And then you and I have got to do what God says. Hear what he says? Trust what he says. Do what he says. God is speaking. And he's speaking because he wants to make us great. Wants to make us blessed. But he wants to make us a blessing. But we can only be great in him and great for him and great like him if we hear what he says, trust what he says, and do what he says. I'm done, but let me be, let me be clear. Let me close by answering for me because I can't answer for nobody else but Kenneth Darrell, Ray Clay, and I'm serious. I'm serious about hearing what he says, trusting what he says, and doing what he says, even in difficult times. See, what caused Abram's lapse of faith or lacks of faith was time got difficult and hard. But the same God who was God in good times is the same God who's God in bad times. The same God who's God with money in your pocket. The same God who's God when you ain't got a dime. 
The same God who was God when you was walking and riding the bus is the same God who's God when you're driving your car. The same God who's God when you had to wash your hair yourself. The same God who's God when you go to the beauty parlor or barbershop. God is God no matter what. And you must learn not to let the times dictate your trust in God. All the times tell you is this. It's rough right now, but if it's rough right now, the same God is still God. He's going to do what only God can do. He will make a way. He will open a door. He will provide. He will protect. He will bless. He will show up in his own way and in his own time. In the meantime, I got to keep on hearing what he says, trusting what he says doing what he says. And I, I made up my mind that I am not going to do it my way because my way makes my life cursed. But God's way makes my life blessed. My, my way makes my life a mess. God's way makes my life a miracle. My way knocks me down. God's way picks me up. I made up my mind. I'm going to trust in God. And I wish I could sing like Alonzo Burr used to sing, but he would say, I trust in God wherever I may be upon the land or on the rolling sea for come what may from day to day my heavenly father watches over me I trust in God because I know he cares for me on mountain bleak or on the stormy sea though billows roll he keeps my soul my heavenly father watches over me I'm going to trust him because our God can be trusted in difficult times, in rough times, in dark days, and, and sad days, and hard moments, I'm still going to trust God because God is who he is and does what he does no matter what the times are. Presidents are elected and, 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 and they have a term, but God ain't got no term. God has been God. God is God. He always will be God. I don't have to elect God. Thank God he elected me. He made me his. God is always now who he's always been. And because I know what and who he's been, I can trust his record. And because I can trust his record, I'm going to hear what he says, trust what he says, and do what he says do are you serious are, are, have you made up your mind are we making up our minds to not do it our way but do it his way God our father we come to you as faithless sons and daughters every once in a while like Abram all of us who say we believe exhibit a lapse of faith and try to do it our way. But thank you for teaching us and reminding us that our way makes us a curse instead of a blessing. Remind us even in these difficult times that we live in that you never fail. You never fail. You have not failed. You are not failing. You will not fail because you cannot fail. Build up our faith so that we will be faithful to you because if we are faithful to you, you'll be faithful to us morning by morning. And I pray that you will make our lives great in you and make us a blessing to others because of you in our lives. Forgive me and forgive us of our faithlessness. Forgive me and forgive us for dropping the ball of faith. Help us pick it up. Help us hold it. Help us be held by it. May we walk by faith, not by sight. And may your will be done in us and through us that we might bless others. I pray for this church and the churches of the city of Patterson that we might engage in ministry that will build and revitalize our city. Thank God for political leaders, but I pray for the church to be the salt of the earth and the light of this community that we might heal it and make it whole in you for lives to be changed, for people to be saved and delivered and liberated and empowered to live lives as victorious people. Make our city great through your church. I pray that there's someone who is worshiping with us who is unsaved or unchurched, that they might come today, believe and belong, commit and connect to you and your world, your will and your way, that they might hear you and trust you and follow you. If they are worshiping with us, not a part of your church, not a part of your body, may they come, make confession, connection and commitment, and begin to grow in your world and your will. 
for those who believe in you belong to your church, may we become stronger and more meaningful and authentic in our discipleship so that our lives and our witness can mean much for you. Thank you for another chance. You did not give up on Abram. You have not given up on me. You are not giving up on us. Thank you for another chance to get right with you. May we embrace that chance and live for you to make the world better and be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray, your son and your daughters say amen. Wherever you are, won't you give God praise today as we thank God for his word. The hymn is being played, God never fails. Because he doesn't fail. And while it's being played, I don't know if they know it, but, but, but while it's being played, if you are witnessing and worshiping with us this worship service and you are not a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have never committed your life to the Lord, you have never said yes to Christ, been baptized, and become a part of God's family, the opportunity to extend you to come today to connect and commit your life to the Lord, that you might live with him and live for him as a part of the family of God called St. Luke. Maybe you have been baptized, you believe, but you don't belong to a church where you are growing and your life is blossoming in faith well you can reconnect and reattach your life to God's church called St. Luke today and reignite and recommit yourself to growth and discipleship the door is open to you to come we invite you if you are virtually watching worshiping with us today email us at kdrclayton at stlukebaptist.org uh, and you can today we will within 24 hours contact you and we will uh, lead you to Christ to renew commitment to him and you can become a part of our church as we grow together you can call our church at 973-345-4309 extension 12 leave your name and your information we will contact you again and we will uh, invite you and reconnect you to God and to his power that you might live your life for him the opportunity is yours to serve a God and love a God and trust a God who never ever fails he wants to be your savior wants to be your Lord we love to be your family but you must make the commitment you must make the first step to come to come and connect to believe and belong and say the first yes to keep on saying another yes. He never fails. He cannot. He will not. He wants to be yours. Won't you come to him today and say yes? And if you are a believer, won't you renew your commitment to live for him and trust him and live for him? Never cease to pray. Just walk upright. Just walk upright. Call him noonday. He'll be there. He'll be there. There's no need to worry Cause God never Come on, we're singing It's your chance to come God never fails. He never fails God never fails. Won't you say yes to him? Won't you make him your Lord? Your King No God Cease. Never cease Come on, just day. walk upright. Just walk upright. Call him noonday. Noon day night. He'll, be He'll, be there. He'll be there. There's no need. Come on, one more time. We're gonna say, God, God never. never. Come on, never remind yourself, God oh, never fails. there's one who's worshiping with us on stage or in church, they may come today, connect, commit, believe and belong and grow in faith where they can declare without equivocation that you never fail. Now as we continue our worship, I pray that those who believe and belong to your church, even St. Luke might give in response to your faithfulness. Give obediently, generously and lovingly as you require of us that our gifts might be used to build up the kingdom of God here on earth and be used to employ ministry that helps, that heals, and makes a difference. Bless every gift. Bless every giver to give as you ask and require through your word. In Christ's name we pray. 
Amen. While we give in the sanctuary, we encourage you to use the electronic means available to you to give through Givelify or Cash App or on our website that you might give your gift and that you might uh, sow into a ministry that's striving to earnestly represent God through practical, helpful healing works. We thank the disciples of our church and all of you who gave us support of our work that, that is ministry on behalf of God. May you be blessed as you give and support the work of God in our lives. We prepare for the benediction. I remind you again that we enter a new week of service and study and worship. Wherever we are called to be, let's be there at the congregation. Uh, let's study, let's pray, let's grow, let's serve, and allow God to work in us for his glory. I remind you again, ladies of St. Luke, that I want every one of us, everybody say every one of us, every lady of St. Luke, to be a part of the September 16th uh, hour of prayer, and then the 18th and 19th of the Virtual Women's Conference. Let God work in your life and strengthen our church through your witness as we continue to grow as sisters and brothers in Christ for the glory and praise of God. I'm going to check the list and I want to see your name. Amen. In two days, the blessed, wonderful, a marvelous, magnificent month of September will arrive. Let's celebrate September in a wonderful, wonderful way because it is the month that God loves the most. Don't be jealous. Just thank God that you know somebody born in the blessed month of September, somebody say amen. Now may the loving care of God the Father, the redeeming power of God the Son, the transforming power of God the Holy Spirit be upon us now and forever. May we say amen, hug yourself, and thank God for a God who never fails. Bless you and see you next week. Done? Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thou compassions, they fail not. As thou has been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies. All I have needed, thy Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. I hate people say, Lord, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. They mess it up. Right. All right. We're, we're done. Thank you. Let me say this. As most of you are aware, when you came in today, temperatures were checked because next we're, we're starting. We are uh, enforcing and enlarging.